This was a planned event. Uh, the security police uh, organized with the railway police uh, to set up this decoy truck. They planned it. This is, this, is, this is the strategy of, of a government which was facing an uprising that at that particular point was ready to take arms. And so they were going to go take people out. They were prepared to take people out, to eliminate people. The cops were hiding in the crates at the back of a truck. So their intention was as soon as they would hear a little stone bouncing uh, uh, off the metal or the box, they would jump out and they would shoot they would punish, they would teach these communities a lesson. That was their mission. Footage and images of violence are not always unambiguous. They, they can be used to serve various agenda. But what's interesting about the Trojan Horse Massacre is that that footage is totally unambiguous. There was no way that the apartheid government could use what was happening there at the time to justify the, uh, their use of force in that community um, without serious provocation, if you can even call it provocation. Um, Commonwealth was meeting in the Bahamas and um, um, Margaret Thatcher lost her argument about um, sanctions. It was significant. It had international imp um, in impact because that footage, that CBS footage, was rushed from Athlone down to the airport. From there, I think it went to Kenya or Dar es Salaam. Then it went on to America. So it had jumps and it was flighted live that very night when they were meeting around sanctions against South Africa and Thatcher lost the debate. So it had huge implications, international implications. You can see with something like the Trojan Horse Massacre exactly how important it is for for journalists and journalism to be free. Because without the journalists being there, capturing it, we wouldn't, we wouldn't have known about it in the way that we know about it today. Um, and the other thing is, is also, I think, to be aware as, as cameramen and journalists of violent footage not having meaning in and of itself. It needs to be framed in a particular way. It still needs to be explained. It still needs to be contextualized. It doesn't. Um, speak in and of itself. So I, I think, you know, good journalists kind of remember that when they are on the scene and they're careful to capture something from particular perspectives because if you capture it from the wrong perspective or the wrong angle, it can be used for any other kind of agenda. When we position these stories, we need to position the bigger question around the inclusivity of struggle against apartheid and continuing that with ongoing struggles against material injustice because they're part of a bigger story they're part of a story of poverty of deprivation because apartheid wasn't just about the race discrimination we have selective memory selective narratives um, and that's how memory works, you know, that's how narratives work. Um, and that's just the nature of, of memory and narratives and forgetting. But we should remember those and everybody, everybody who's uh, paid that price. And um, if we do not do that, we can never really be a very healthy society. So by forgetting them, we actually forgetting what the struggle was about. In telling the story about the 1980s uh, and the contribution of the 1980s, you'll hear a whole lot of us who come out of that particular period were extremely disappointed with what happens after 1990 because that whole contribution of the 1980s is almost switched off. It's like it never happened. If you want to say to me, you know, 
What's the uh, contribution of, 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 of the Western Cape? I would say that the contribution of the Western Cape here was in laying down a model for how communities could be organised. The big thing for all of us is, is putting into a, a lot better perspective the complexity of the resistance movement uh, inside of the country. Uh, and to tell the story, and how we get to 1994, in much, much fuller ways. South Africa really takes seriously the issue of continued memory and the inclusivity of the struggle against apartheid, because that is important to recognise in order to be able to really have a more inclusive dispensation around a variety of issues of material injustice. If you look at Sean Mahmoud's Hillary's story, you will see that she's, her last statement on her story is, I would forgive if I knew who to forgive, but I don't. And there was never a finding that found who was responsible for the killing of those particular boys that fell that day. There were lots that were sprayed with bullets, um, but there were three deaths. And surely, if you know who holds a firearm and discharges a bullet, you will know who killed those boys. Nobody was culpable, responsible.